right, so we just covered how to do an Una boot for compression therapy. Um, sometimes Una boots are not indicated um, and you need to do a different type of compression therapy. So this is a different version. It's a three layer compression with ACE bandages. You could also do a three layer with uh, Coban. You could do a four layer compression. It's all dependent on um, A, your patient. You wanna make it patient specific. And then also um, included in that is um, their diagnosis and what's most appropriate for their treatment protocol. Some people need that extra level of compression. Some people can't tolerate the ACE compression or you know, they can't tolerate the Coban or they're heavy, heavy exudators and the Coban doesn't breathe enough um, or they can't tolerate Una boots because their skin's too friable um, or too delicate and you don't wanna run the risk of worsening things with the Una boot if you don't have the appropriate technique put on. Um, so we'll cover today the uh, three layer compression with the ACE bandages, it provides benefits. Um, you can tailor the amount of compression by how much tension you put across um, the ACE bandages um, as you come around the leg. And you can use it for wound care to help with uh, compression, force out that edema and allow the uh, wound margins not to be as stressed from the interior pressure from the interstitial fluid. Um, you can use it for sports medicine applications, ankle sprains, um, tendonitis, any sort of uh, support um, through the soft tissues uh, it can be more comforting to the patient, but a lot of our applications will be for wound care. So we'll start one of two layers you can start with is either the Curlex, which is more of the coarse, I can remember it as Corsi Curlex, and the cast padding, which is the softer material here. Um, I usually tend to start with the cast padding just because it's softer um, to the skin. It's less abrasive. Curlex um, has been fine to use and you'll notice it's used a lot in different applications of things. But one thing to be very mindful of is that it can um, be much more um, uh, difficult on the skin if you have a patient with peripheral arterial disease or something like that, you can get a lot of friction, especially at the joints or on the bony prominences, and those can actually lead to wounds. I've seen it um, with nurses in the hospitals that um, either don't have other materials to use or you know just don't know the different applications of things. So um, you can either check with your provider or just be mindful of um, the types of dressings because not all materials are made the same, obviously. So what we'll do is we'll start with um, this cast padding layer. And we're gonna say that our patient here has a wound on her medial ankle, um, a venous stasis wound, um, and therefore we're gonna go from the toes all the way to the tibial tuberosity to allow for that whole right lower extremity uh, compression. If you were just to say, go do the compression just above the wound, then you're gonna get a lot of um, increased edema just proximal to that dressing and you're not really gonna be benefiting the patient. Um, substantially. So again, my technique is to go wrap up and into the arch and that's really just for patient comfort. Um, one thing you want to be um, mindful of is it's always easier to do a dressing when you have, I call it the snail technique. So if you look at this, it's kind of a snail. Here's the shell and here's the head of the snail. So you always want the shell on top. If your shell is on bottom, it won't wrap as easily and you're gonna struggle and struggle and struggle and be like, well, how do they make it look so easy? So remember your snail technique with the shell on top, okay? So you wrap your metatarsal heads, make sure to capture those. Try not to make any wrinkles because those can uh, be uncomfortable for the patient as they're walking, even if they're non-weight bearing and you have them in a cam boot per se. Come up and around. Some people struggle with ankle joints, getting uh, the dressing to sit right on this. Um, really what I can recommend is coming into the arch, just right on the heel, and then following up and around that lateral ankle. And you'll be able to capture that heel on your next turn or your next pass of the snail. So come down and around here. I'll have my assistant hold right underneath the knee here. And then I come right underneath and we're able to fully and capture that heel and then it sets you up you can capture this little tongue here and then you're set up to go up the leg so again you can put some compression through this but the material is not going to provide a lot the biggest thing is 50 percent of coverage across every layer of the dressing you could do the herringbone technique which is that around and up and around and down technique depending on the amount of compression you want 
through your dressing. And then you go to your next layer, Curlex. And you see, I am going down and into the arch. So, something I catch myself on even, but you can always restart and you just wanna make sure that your patients are comfortable and wouldn't be detrimental to do it that way, but might as well do it right. Come down, capture that heel there, and then you're able to come up 50%, 50%, 50%, right under this tibial tuberosity, which is your bony landmark up here. Good. Contraindications for this would be if your patient had a acute DVT, obviously you don't want to put on a bunch of compression and dislodge that DVT. So here we have again the snail, the head of the snail here and the shell up top here. So with this one, I'm gonna use the four inch uh, ace bandage. Sometimes you can have a double six inch or a six inch. Four inch is easiest for the foot and the ankle. You can use a six inch for the calves um, or you can use double fours. So around and up. And this is where you're gonna get most of your compression. So I usually cuff the forefoot once and then come up and around that ankle here, good. And then around and up, around and down, around and up, around and down, around and up, around and down. You get this nice herringbone pattern on this. And if you have a patient who has a, you know, pretty large leg or has, um, you know, someone in like a, NFL player has really large, long tibias. You might need um, two of these ace bandages. You can see that ours fell short a little bit, and I want that compression up here, so I'm going to use that second ace bandage. Typically, you're going to use about two if you're going from the foot to the ankle. Um, if you don't have an awesome assistant like Trey here, one thing you can do is use your six pack abs, balance your patient right here, make sure they're comfortable, and start right where you left off. And round and up, round and down, round and up, round and down. And you can either follow this back down if your patient's not um, at risk of having too much compression and then just tape it. I never use the little metal prongs because those have been known to cause wounds as well. So if you have an awesome assistant, they'll be ready with the tape. And with the tape, you wanna tape the two corners here and here, and then one in the middle so that you can see if the corners aren't taped, it's gonna pull. And you wanna make sure that it stays nice and well compressed. Um, <laughs> ideally, your um, partner would have your tape cut for you but that's okay. Sometimes you have to do things on your own. And that is how I would expect the ace bandage to be taped is both corners so that you're not getting any uh, pull back there. And then check in with your patient, make sure that you have enough, um, you can fit two fingers or two finger compression there. Make sure that they still have pulses in their or capillary refill time in their toes. Um, and make sure they're comfortable. So feel okay? Yeah. All right.